we're live. Hi. Hi. Hi, Hi guys. Hi, yeah. girls. How are you doing? Good. How are you guys? Grand. Hey. Awesome. Ooh. Sarah? What do you have? What do you have there, Miss? The guys, what are we drinking? What? What are we drinking? Oh. Um, I am drinking a uh a raspberry <laughs> I don't know drunk already a raspberry LaCroix with Tito's it's probably a triple I'm not gonna lie I made it strong a triple oh okay well, this is uh this is straight up uh Jack Daniel's apple yes uh, it's truly terrible it is but, yeah I mean I got it because it's fall apple yeah you know flavors yeah. but it's it's so sweet i did put an ice cube in here to like cut it a little bit i'm just just sipping on it just sipping okay maybe, maybe some seltzer would help yeah probably <laughs> i feel like super sweet because are you saying it's too sweet like it's like ooh. yeah it's a little jolly rancher-ish i feel like things that are super sweet like that oftentimes are best served as cold as you can possibly get them yeah right mm -hmm. otherwise it's too syrupy yeah. Yeah. Are you sipping on anything, Michelle? I am sipping on some coffee. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's like afternoon coffee time here on the West Coast. It's like 4 p.m. So I need a little afternoon pick me up. Love it. So here we are. Um, well, let's see. Who do we have here today? Who's here? Over at my chat. Oh, we have Lauren Boylis. Hello. <gasps> Hi, Lauren. Uh, Linda, Diana, Robin, Jackie, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Cece, Becky, Kathy, Tony. Hey, guys. Kim. My goodness. My goodness. So good to see you all. Yes. Yay. Um, all right. All right. Okay. I yeah. do have some treats today. I will be munching on some gluten free. Donut minis, they're Ooh. apple cider. Ooh, la la. Ooh, all of the apple cider, pumpkin, everything has hit the supermarkets, and I couldn't, I couldn't resist. I that couldn't sounds resist. amazing. <laughs> yes, uh, Sarah, do you have a snack? No, I don't. But okay. I do have um, maybe a little bit later. I have a lippy to put on. <gasps> it's my no. favorite. Yes. It is. <laughs> I have mine my, on too. So my rare beauty stuff came in and yeah. I put it all on. I love the primer. Yeah. And I love the highlighter. Yes. I got cool. Enchant as well. Um, this concealer brush is the the best. Really? The best. It's like a finger, but Ooh. in like the best way. Yeah. Wow. Good love to it. know. And then um, you know, the foundation. Um, I, I'm not sure that I got the right color. Oh. I'm still kind of working through it. It's maybe a little warm for mm. me, like a little olivey, a little yellowish. Okay. But I think I can work through it. I feel like if I got a lighter color, I you'd see it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyways, maybe a little bit later, I'll put this on. Yes. Yeah. I can't wait. Kate, is that the same color that you actually have on? No, this color, because I think, Sarah, you got the Selena Gomez's, like, go-to color, right? You got Inspire. Is mm -hmm. that what you have? Yes, okay. okay. Yeah, I have on um, Motivate. So I have on, like, a, it's more like a pinky coral. Okay. Um, But, yeah, I these are, I can't wait for you to try it. I love them so much. And that color is going to look so good on you, Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get any of these, Michelle? I know that you got some things. I did get some things. I did not get those. You know, I saw the word matte and I was like, eh, maybe uh, not. And um, I was already picking up, well, this video will come out on Saturday where I try it all, but I, the primer I really enjoy. I tried the foundation, the concealer, the powder, the brow product I really like. Cool. Uh, and then I actually got uh, like the tinted balm but I didn't try it in my video. Yeah. And it's okay. I just have a problem with the packaging. Kate, did you get any of like the, the lips, like the bullet style lip products? I, I did. Yes. The, this one, the balm you're yes. talking about. Yes. 
you don't like the shape of it? The shape is fine, but okay. the fact that it you can put it on in any way, there's no click. So it doesn't have to line up. Ooh. Oh. That bugs the hell out of me. Oh. That's that's a flaw. I just don't like that. Because there's no cl you're saying because there's no click. There's no right? click. We need a magnet. Yeah, I guess you're right. That's not as satisfying, is it? Yeah, and I just feel like if I don't line it up just right, and let's say I throw it in my bag, the corner mm -hmm. it'll just it'll just oh. come. Out. Yeah, it slides around like it slides around. It slides around. Yeah. But yeah. I, I hope I, they. Fix I that. did. I did like this, and I like this color. It's a Luke. It's very like. Um, yeah, but I wanted, but I like the formula of it. So but I know what you're I can't saying. hear I, you. <laughs> Hang on. I thought you were talking to me. So, so Tyler is moderating for us tonight. So maybe yes. he's having some issues. Oh, Devin Kirk just sent us uh, a super <gasps> chat. Thank you so much. Um, oh, sweet. For another fun night. Kate, thank you for recommending the fresh soy cleanser. You saved my face and I love you for it. Oh my goodness. That's so good. I do love that soy cleanser. Well, you're welcome. Thank yes. you. <laughs> Yay. All right. We're having a little technical difficulties. Our moderator needs a wrench. Oh, yeah. I thought I'd given him <laughs> one. Okay. Hold on. Is he just Tyler? He's just Tyler Pepin, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Tyler is saving the day because truth be told, Randy, <laughs> Randy's supposed to moderate, but he dropped his phone in some water. So we're having a, a rice phone situation. So Tyler's saving the day. Thank you, Tyler. Amateur. <laughs> I know. Is um is it just is it one word? I see it. I see Tyler Pepin. He just wrote test. Yeah, his little icon is like a pink person, it looks like. Okay. Can I do it from the chat here? Hold on. I think you yeah. can. Yeah, add moderator. Okay, awesome. There you go. Yeah. Sorry, okay, we are good to go. Yes. Sorry, sorry. It's okay. All right. Well, thank you, Tyler. Yeah, thank you, Tyler. There he um, is. We see it. Test. Testies. Woot. <laughs> testies. testies. Your testies. I'm having some sashim. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Just a little snacking. Love it. Love it. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to bust out these donuts soon. Um, oh, delish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, it should be said that we're all wearing the same thing, which is Sarah's merch. Yeah. Yes. We're all <laughs> it's goblin time. We're at I love the goblins. I love my goblin. So I have on, so Sarah has two sweatshirt options. They're both the same style. They have raglan sleeves, but the material is a little different. So I have, can't remember what it's called, but it's like French terry. French terry. Mm -hmm. French terry. Mm -hmm. And then you have like what the super soft fleece? Yeah, this is sponge fleece. So it's like traditional fuzzy yeah. um, sweatshirt material. Mine, I don't know if you guys can see, but it looks like toweling. Mm. Yeah. So it's a little bit lighter, uh, thinner. And then because of that, it like it hangs a little bit more than the sponge fleece. The thing yeah. that's good about it, like if anybody has ordered merch from Kate, the hoodies that are so soft and like not too heavy, this is the same company that makes the actual garment. So if you love that super soft material, you'll get that mm. with it. Yes. Jennifer uh, is saying that she's wearing her unsubscribe shirt. Mm. <laughs> ah. <Yay. laughs> People love and the I, I just have on the t-shirt. I have on the... Um, I don't know if there's a name for it, but yeah, I have on just the unisex t-shirt. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Is, that, is that black, Kate, or is that navy? I can't tell. This is, I think this is a, like a Heather, like a vintage looking black, I think. Oh, is that? Is yeah, that right? I think it's, I think it's called graphite or something like that. It's like a heathered. Yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's onyx is what it's called, but it's like a heathered, it's a heathered black. So it's not true black. Right. I love that. Yeah. Hey, well, thanks so, for wearing the merch, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> of course, of course. We have infiltrated Michelle's channel with Goblin merch. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, 
Kate, will you please tell yeah. us what's on your eyes? Oh, yeah, Ooh. sure. Um, I just did this. It's the Charlotte Tilbs. Mm. It's the Charlotte Tilbury, the jewel pot, the walk of no shame. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's super easy. I like it. It's so beautiful. Yeah. I love Tyler it. Said, Tyler said people are asking about super chat. Let me, let me go through the. Oh, they're asking about it in what way? Uh, I don't know. I've got earbuds in, so this is probably not a good. Tyler's over here talking to me from the hallway, and I'm like, "What?" I, I, I always have to ask now that to everyone who's watching, can you hear all of us okay? Because I usually, I sometimes have like problems with people hearing me. So let let us know if there's any issues with that. Yeah. Oh, I see. There was a super a super chat sent by Devin Kirk. Yes. <laughs> Oh, Roro A says, hi, Tyler. Question. This is my first time on a live stream. I saw that someone yes. sent in 1499. Is this a fundraiser? Yeah, if they this... want it to be. <laughs> Sorry, I was going to say this is a telethon. Like, I don't know if you knew, but the Jerry Lewis, it's like a Jerry Lewis telethon, basically. This is, this is not a fundraiser. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. JK. The um, super chats are like a donation to the channel, which I would split with these ladies. Of course, YouTube gets their 30%. They get a percentage. It's either 30 or 40. I can never remember. Um, it's yeah. 30. They get, YouTube gets they 30%. Get 30. Yeah. Okay. The creator gets 70% and I would split it with these ladies. And so it's really meant to, um, cause you can comment when you click on the super chat, which is like a big dollar sign at the bottom. When you click on that, you can comment, you can ask a question. It's really just to kind of like highlight your whatever, whatever you're saying in the chat. Yeah. Um, or if you just want to donate to the channel, that's great. Do not feel obligated. It is not necessary. It is just an option for you. Um, so that's the super chat. That's what that is. People are saying I sound tinny and I'm wondering just, just, just to try it. Sarah, do you think, because do you think that's your ear? Should I take or, my, I yeah, don't let me know. Take, I'll take my out. I don't know. Well, can you hear me now? How do yeah. we sound? How do I sound folks? Is this better? Any better? Do we sound, do I not know tinny? It might just be help, helpless situation. Um, oh, we just have to see what that Kate needs a head. Oh, I need a headset. Really? Wow. I'm mean, probably not gonna. Different. I'm probably not gonna get that. So. <laughs> okay, Heather Willis says it's better. Okay. Other people are saying way better. Okay. Okay. Well, it's as good as it's gonna get. <laughs> so. Okay. Well, here. Well, here we are. I'm glad Sarah, I charged my phone up. Sarah, thank you. I'm. Thank you for doing that. No worries. Happy to do it. Um, so Lori Hill sent us a super chat for $4.99. Lori Hill is a good friend of mine here on YouTube, and she has a wonderful channel. If you are curious at all about plastic surgery or just any sort of like facial procedures or body, I guess too, although I think Lori focuses on the face, definitely check out her channel. I don't know anyone more well-informed than Lori Hill, <laughs> if you're mm -hmm. interested in that. So she has a lot of videos where she will kind of compare older pictures of celebrities to current day pictures. And she'll kind of talk about the work that she thinks that they've gotten done. And I, I think what I loved so much about her channel is that it's never in a negative way. She's not like spilling tea. She's not like, um, criticizing them for getting any work. She's simply just sort of breaking down what she thinks it is that they may have gotten done. And it's more of like a, an empowering thing. And it's like, if that's something that you're looking to do, then she thinks that's the procedure that they got done and it's something that maybe you want to look into. So it, it's just fantastic. It just has like the right tone. Um, so definitely check out her channel, L-O-R-R-Y Hill. And she just passed a hundred thousand subscribers. Here Congratulations! On Silver play, yes. silver play. Yay! Cool. That's so, awesome. Yeah, check her out for sure. What a great idea for content. 
you know, like just picking apart somebody's face. I love it. I love it. It's so, and you know, I'm not even someone that's like personally interested in doing that, but it's so fascinating. You're like, wow. It's like the things that like the things that we can do now, it's just amazing. Wow. Okay, I'm well. I have to subscribe now, so that's that's happening. That's what I'm doing right after this. <laughs> nice. Yes. yes. Um. Sorry, Kate. Oh. Were you gonna say something? Yeah. No, I was. I'm sorry. I just Ven Venmo from Sherry Ford because <sighs> Sherry Ford, you know, she's very godmother. Sherry. She sent, she sent us all. She's uh, ninety ninety dollar Venmo. She said, "Love you, ladies. Thanks for the distraction and the laughter. Super sweet. Of course, I we we you know." I'm gonna split it. I'm gonna split it with you, ladies. Mm. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you, Sherry. Sh- Sassy Red says, "Sherry, damn four. <laughs> yep. I know she's she kills it. She kills it. Yeah. Bye, Tony. Tony's leaving. She has a meeting that's starting. Oh, okay. <laughs> bye, t- bye, Tony. Bye. <laughs> See ya. Um. Okay. Yeah. So, should we get into it, ladies? Let's. The, re- the reason why we're here today. Yes, I think we should. <laughs> mm-hmm. So a couple days ago, Kate Poloed, Marco Poloed, Sarah and I, and said, have you guys started watching The Vow on HBO? And I was like, The Vow? What do you... <laughs> Tell me what? more. What are you talking about? So The Vow is, I don't know if you guys have heard of it, have... um watched any of it, but it's a docu-series that HBO is putting out and HBO, those fuckers, they are just releasing one episode a week at this point. So they're not, they're not doing it Netflix style. They're not doing it 2020 style. Rude. Doing it like 1998 style. So we're only on episode three, I believe out of eight or 10. What? Yeah, yeah, there's gonna, there's going to be quite a few. I think there are nine, so that's what we oh. need six more. Oh my God. <sighs> Why does HBO do that? Or, I mean, ah! they might as well just have us log into our account and select the next DVD to get mailed to our house. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. While I record it on my VHS. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um. So. Yeah. Louise yeah, is saying to keep you watching. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's angry. So, but <laughs> wouldn't you yeah. wouldn't you watch wouldn't you watch any? Does it matter? Like if you binge it or or what over a longer period of time, you have to keep coming back and you're like, oh, I need to see this and that, and I don't know. Right, don't because know. then you might maybe watch what comes on before it or what comes oh. on after it, or see commercials for something else that's like, ooh, I mm-hmm. want to watch that too. So, I mean, it is okay. It's that's wise. smart. That's yeah. smart. Okay, HBO. All right. Right. They did that same crap with the Golden State Killer. What was it called? I'll be gone in the dark. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I was like four episodes in when I realized that there was like five or something or something like that, and I'm like, "What? They're not all available." Yeah. What? I know. Okay. Got it. Oh, you know, Debbie O actually makes a good point. She just wrote free trial period, and that makes sense because you usually get a trial for like what 14 days, and if you like in those 14 days, just binge watch everything you want, then you just, you wouldn't sign up. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. (coughs) Excuse me. (coughs) So even though (laughs) there's only been three episodes, I feel like there's so much to unpack already. Wait, can we sign off in the chat here? Like who, who knows what we're talking about? Who knows who's the, the vow does, Anyone know what we're talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the vow, or even do you know what Nexium is? I was talking with my best friend about. I'm like, oh, you need to watch the show, The Vow. It's about Nexium. It's this <laughs> thing, and I started going in to explain it. And she interrupted me. She's like, oh, I know all about that Nexium, and I'm like, wow, okay, <laughs> yeah, I, okay. Describe, people, please. No, we're getting a lot of. We're getting a lot of no's. Oh, yes to Nexium. Okay. Yeah, I I think it's pretty split down the middle. I'm seeing a lot of yeah. And yes, there are going to be spoiler alerts. So I, I mean, I don't want to tell you. I mean, right? Y- yes. Yeah. Although, although I mean, it is a docu series about something that has pretty much come to a conclusion. So, yeah. so I, I don't think there's spoilers. Yeah. Oh, I meant spoilers. Yeah. Okay. Well, <clears> yeah. <throat> I guess. Yeah. Right. 
Um, so, wait, Kate, would you, would you yeah. want to kind of maybe sum up? Yeah. I think, I think you'd be best. Oh, well, I don't know, but okay. Um, so basically this is a documentary that my, okay. So the other night, I don't know what the hell we were, we we're watching Cobra Kai for the millionth time. And my <laughs> friend, one of my many friends named Sarah, not this Sarah, but another Sarah, she texted me and she was like, are you watching the vow? And I was like, it sounded like some kind of notebook shit. I was like, no, what? no, what? I don't yeah, because there's a movie called The Vow that's very notebookish. Oh, that's oh, why. Okay, because I thought the same thing. Okay, so I was like, "That sounds stupid." And then she she said, which is very leading. She said, "Because this is a this is a friend when we used to work in retail, at Lululemon. That's how I know her." And she said, "I think." that you might want to watch it and get back to me if, if you relate to anything or it sounds familiar. And it, I was like, is this about cults? <laughs> and she was like, yes, pretty much. And I was like, I'm on it. So that's basically what led me to us to start watching it. And it's about um, Nexium, right? So that's sort it's sort of like one of those sort of self-help leadership uh find the leader within organizations that that ha became so popular i f i feel like it became pretty popular in like the, the late 90s slash 2000s um i could just be talking out of my ass but i think that's true and um basically yeah that that's that's the really short <laughs> version of it and then like basically how it becomes well it completely devolves it completely falls apart um, because this is pretty common knowledge. The founder of it, um, I don't know. I don't really know. I don't, I actually, I haven't Googled it. So I don't know the details. I don't know where he is, but it basically became like a sex cult, um, in upstate New York. So that's sort of where we know it ended. So there you have it. Yeah. Yeah. Does do either of you or anyone in the chat know why it was in Albany of all places? I just thought that was so random. Is that where Keith was from? Like his home base? You know, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know if they mentioned that. I hmm. don't, I don't know either. A lot of stuff was happening in upstate New York, but I don't, Yeah, or I guess, but also Vancouver too. So that's not entirely true. I don't know. I don't know why. I'm consulting the Wikipedias yeah. to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, also, side note, your lipstick looks amazing. This is like butter. It's so yeah. creamy, but not like in a slippery sort of way. It's I've never experienced this kind of texture in a lip. I know. I it's matte, but it's not dry. It feels like lip balm almost, yep. but not greasy. Mm -hmm. And it looks perfectly blotted. Love it. You were right. You were right. Okay. I know. <laughs> I, have well, well, I went online to look at the color selection and they did have a lot of nudes. So I definitely want to try like a, like a poo poo brown nude. <laughs> they do have some nudes and Michelle, I, I, this is the one color I got Ooh. that was sort of out of my comfort zone, but I do think you like the dark shades. I feel like you'd like this. Yeah, that's pretty. Is that more of like a plum? It is. It's like a it's like a dark um oh Ooh. like a yeah. Yeah. Ooh, la la. Like Ooh. a bear like a dark berry. Nice. Yeah. Nice. yeah. So I don't see anything on the Wikipedia about Keith Rainier being perhaps from Albany, but there's so much to unpack. So, so much. Please let us know, chats, if you guys have no idea what the heck we're talking about. Yeah, but if but if you don't, then maybe this will make you want to watch it. I would want to watch it after hearing people talk about it because it is, it is juice. It, it is. And I don't know if you two agree with me on this, but I actually find, I, I, so far I'm finding it a little slow. Yes. The storytelling. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. I me and just being impatient. I think it's slow. I do think it's slow, but I will, cause I actually rewatched the third episode before this just to like refresh. And I feel like, 
I don't know. I feel like it almost has to be told that way because you need to be dragged through like what these people thought they were getting into okay. in order to be horrified by what happens. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Like episode one for me about 20 minutes in, I'm like, okay, I get it. I get it. But then it just keeps going for another freaking 40 minutes almost. Cause each episode is about an hour. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's like, yeah, okay. We get it. Like it all sounds really lovely on the surface, it's like, you know, it's an organization that's meant to like help you find success within yourself and unlock the power of your potential and all these things that are a little, well, not a little, they're a lot woo woo. Okay. That's fine. But like it works and yeah. they're showing how they like cured Tourette's syndrome in people. Like that's very intriguing. Like, holy crap, that looks amazing. Yeah. yeah. But then, um, what, what is not it? Okay. So Nexium is like the umbrella, right? And then they have I don't know how many, a lot, of a lot like smaller breakout um, groups, I guess, of the Umbrella Nexium. So like there's a women's group, there's a men's group, there's a group that's just meant for executives. There's one that's meant for performers. There's meant for one for, I don't know, a lot of physical fitness or whatever. Um, yes. Yeah. All, all that. Oh my God. Starts getting real Sorry, weird. I just have to call out the plastic boy is here. The plastic boy. I love your channel. <laughs> I love your videos. Oh my gosh. Welcome. Oh. Welcome. That's welcome. Amazing. Thank you so much for joining. Um, well, he wrote, what's this called? So this is the vow, the vow on HBO. It's a docu-series and it's just, it's fascinating. <laughs> it's fascinating. It's fascinating. Oh. Yeah. I, I feel like, well, the reason I have a fast, and I know Michelle, you have like a personal story associated with this as well, but like I sort of got, um, I don't want to say someone made me go to one of, one no, of someone these. Made you, someone made you go. Someone you made me go. Someone made me go. And also I was made to go because I was too nice when I was 24, 24 shouldn't be in quotes, but I just really wanted to finish it off with three things. <laughs> when I was 24, I was actually 24 and I was like, you know, I was uh, working for, I was doing a show and the, the director of the show who I become friends with, who was super cool, um, but also had anger management issues, <laughs> um, was like, again, remember 24. So I'm 37 now. So I feel like I'm a different person. But back then I was all wide eyed. And he was like, there's this thing that has really changed my life. And I love for you to experience it. And I knew immediately that I didn't want to experience whatever this was. This sounded weird. But I was like, okay, he's like, I'd love to invite you as my guest. And you can come and, you know, take part in this evening. And I was like, okay, now I didn't want to give up a night off, but anyway, I did. And I went with my, my cousin who was, I needed someone to be a witness for whatever was going to transpire. And this particular organization was called Landmark Forum. And it's, it's a cult. I'm not even going to try to say it's not like, it's literally like Nexium. It's all the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I just remember like, going down, going down into this basement, it was a carpeted basement. It felt like we were meeting like a sterile sort of AA slash church folding chairs, uh, stage podium, the whole thing. And I remember like my cousin and I like sat by off by ourselves and there was a group of guests who were like allowed in for the evening. And, you know, we were a part of this like six person group. So we would watch, uh, this, I thought it was, it was like a ceremony and the members would get up and they would tell these like really amazing stories about how their life has been changed by Landmark Forum. And then if I recall correctly, unless I made this up, don't think I did, like the people in the audience or the audience, whatever you call it, the people in the audience were like, I acknowledge you. I acknowledge you, Karen. And then like the person on stage would like respond back, maybe like, I acknowledge you. And I was I remember my cousin Jensen grabbing, or I might have grabbed her knee, who's to say how it went. And she <laughs> she just like leaned over and she was like, This is a cult. And I was like, I know. 
<laughs> You're in a cult. Call your dad. You're in a cult. Call your dad. And so I, we were, we just, right, but at least we had each other. And so then they were like, this is the part of the evening where we say goodbye and we send our guests off to the next room. Like, <laughs> fucking vampires that sounds terrifying and so so then we like like lemmings like are trod into this like tiny room with an easel and a you know a drawing board and they give us worksheets that ask us all these questions like what do you want to change about your professional life what's a relationship in your life that's really bothering you and then you're supposed to go around the room and share it out loud, which I'm already having palpitation, <laughs> palpitations because I definitely did. And I definitely did not want to. But at that time, I was, again, too nice. So I like shared this personal situation with a relationship I was in. And I remember regretting it immediately. I was like, oh, my God, I just shared that with people I don't know. I hate group experiences, group exercise classes. I'm not religious, so I don't go to church, don't like church, don't, don't like, didn't like camp, don't like, didn't like this. And I was like, this is, doesn't feel right. Yeah. And so I ended up sharing the stuff I didn't want to share. <laughs> this is unnecessary, just running, <laughs> running emojis. Yeah. Get out. Yes, I love exactly. it. Get out. If it would have been today, I would have just left. I would have been, it would have been awkward, but I would have left, but I, I just felt like I couldn't. So, and they make you feel that way. So they give out these worksheets, you share things you don't want to share, and then they pitch you on the whole deal. I unfortunately left my information because I'm an idiot. So I left all of my contact information for them because that's what they want. And so for the next six months, they continued to like calling me relentlessly, relentlessly saying, you know, trying to ask me you know, do you want to sign up? You know, we have, you had this session with us and little old me, super nice as I was, like finally had to just dig in. And I was super blunt. And I was like, you have called me so many times. I have asked you not to call me. Please stop calling me. I never want to hear from you again, ever. Yeah. And that man was so manipulative and he was like, okay, well, I'm really sorry to hear that because you're really missing out on some amazing progress in your life. And so, you know, that's, that's up to you. That's, but I, it was like, just that, like, it was like a guilting mother over the phone. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, no, I'm good. And then I just hung up. And so that was landmark forum. And so that's exactly what this shit is. Ugh, yikes. I'd never heard of any of this crap. Michelle, did you know, do you know about landmark forum? Yes. Yes. And I actually went to, for a very brief moment, went to uh, a meeting. So I had a friend who will remain nameless, but she was very involved. And she, uh, it was, you know, it gets to the point with these groups where they become like a, you know, a family. And so they just start, they start with these uh, seminars and these sessions. And then all of a sudden you're hanging out all the time and then you're doing, you're spending weekends together, whatever. Anyway, so she was really, really deep in. And of course, like any cult, uh, one of the biggest things you do as a member is you bring other people in. So she just, you know, we were kind of part of a big girl group, girlfriend group. And she just kept bugging all of us. Oh, you got just try it. Just try it. We have these things every once in a while where it's really just like an information session for you guys. You just come, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to do anything. Of course, it was over an entire weekend. And finally, she broke us down. Finally, we were like, fine. We all decided to go, like all like five of us or whatever, six of us. Uh, and we go. And, you know, I'm like, for my friend, I will come and I will sit here. But I was like, I don't want anyone to talk to me. I don't want to answer any questions. I don't want to do shit. I will sit here. I will listen to your spiel. I will support my friend, but that's it. That was like what was going on in my head. And I went to the landmark uh, 
headquarters, I guess, in Manhattan, which is on like West 34th Street. So they had their name on the side of the building. I mean, it was huge. And so it was very different from going into a basement, (laughs) a carpeted basement. It was, it was like, you know, with the security guard, you had to sign in, like it was going into an office building um, in Manhattan. So it was very, very different, but you're still in a windowless, sterile room and there's someone at the front and they always have that stupid whiteboard thing. Yeah, the whiteboard. Yeah, yeah, where they're, you know, whatever. And, you know, we didn't want to be there anyway. And then the first thing that they asked us to actually do, because I didn't want to do anything, they handed out a sheet of paper, you're supposed to fill out your name, all your information and like things that you want to improve upon in your life. Things that, and I was like, no. And I just got up and left at that point. Cause I just wasn't into it to begin with. So it was easy for me to leave. I was like looking for reasons to leave. Yeah. Um, that, that's yeah. good. I'm glad good for I'm, you. I'm good for you, but with slow clap, Michelle Wong, she made the right choice. I She's will in say charge. I wish I would have, God, I wish I had this story. This isn't how it went down, but like if I would have left, like what that would have looked like me like coming out because the room is like it, a part of the big room so like the small i would have had to like make an exit and then like walk like bust out and be like and everyone just, i mean it would have been worth it but i wasn't i wasn't cool enough at that point to do that but it it that's exactly how it was it's like they that's how these organizations work and that's what the vow talks about where they it's all about recruitment. It's a huge business. And I went to this in Toronto. That makes sense about New York city because they're making a killing. They're making a killing doing this. Mm -hmm. And like, what's good in therapy one-on-one that's all well and good. But when you put it in this like group setting that has a bottom line, it just doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, at that point, both of you guys could have used this like amazing line from Romy and Michelle's high school reunion as the excuse to get out of anything. You can be like, I'm sorry, I cut my foot earlier and my shoe was filling up with blood. <laughs> that's that's a good one. I forgot about Put that. Put that in your pocket for later. <laughs> the gift from me to you. Oh my God. Oh, it's so good. And even if someone recognized the quote, that makes it even better. Just that they know that they know. That it's yeah. Romy and Michelle. And when you fill out your paper, you could be like, well, profession, I invented post-its. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm doing that next time. Yeah. yeah. Noted. Um, sorry, I'm just highlighting Leslie's comment here because I kind of forgot about that. Uh, how, you know, they were bringing in these people, obviously, bringing these people into the cult. And so now you're not just a member, now you're working for them. Right. Now, now it's like your full-time job. They're telling you they will eventually pay you, but it's going to take some time. So a lot of these people were like destitute working for them full-time, kind of depending on the higher up members on their kindness to like fly them places, feed them, whatever. So there's that kind of manipulation too. And then they were working them to the bone and telling them, you know, that they have to get over this like weakness. Yeah. (laughs) That like being sleep defri- deprived is just, well, you're just being, you know, you're just being weak. It was really, really crazy. Right. I, I thought, I mean, I, who operates well being sleep deprived? And they were bas- basically telling them that they were just basically, you know, just complaining, you know. It's really I mean, funny. Oh, go I ahead. was going to say, it's really funny when you're watching it, you hear them, you know, to recounting these stories of how they were manipulated slowly in a kind of a step-by-step build-up sort of process. But then in the next breath, they're criticizing other organizations that do the same thing. They're like, oh, people compare us to Scientology. They're crazy. And it's like, same thing. It's the same yeah. thing. It's the same. Yeah. And it's also this, they, they sort of thrive off of this sort of gaslighting manipulation where which I I do, I do understand it. It's it's, that's the problem with this. A lot of these things, I think in moderation and done with like, you know, one-on-one with an actual therapist can be helpful, but Mm -hmm. it's not, this is not the same. And so basically they, they say anything, people can't make you feel, make you feel anything. Mm 
-hmm. So anything that you feel is because of you and you can control that. And it takes complete responsibility, complete responsibility away from the organization itself. Right. Which is brilliant because it's yeah. like, oh, oh, I'm, this is my problem. I'm doing this. Oh, it's not, it's not Landmark. It's not Nexium. Yeah. But at the same time, they still take credit for all of the successes because they gave you those tools. Right. Absolutely. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Double birds. Yes. Double birds. Yes. But like, yeah, it's, it's crazy. And, um, I don't even know. There's so many things that I don't even know where to go next. <laughs> well, Mrs. Unnecessary asks, who was the actress that was so deeply involved with this? Allison Mack. Yeah, and then there were a bunch from Battlestar Galactica, which I thought was weird. I'm like, yeah. Well, I thought it was weird too until like Randy and I were talking about it. And we we're like, oh, because of their that, you know, it makes sense because they have to like basically um, not convert people, but what's what's recruit recruit. And they're recruiting so, the people they know, right? Yeah. They, yeah. All the <laughs> a bunch of people from Smallville, a bunch of people from Battlestar yes. Galactica. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and did you guys ever watch Battlestar Galactica? That that will mess with your mind. And I felt like they were probably into this because of all the time they spent on that show. Because it was kind of wackadoodle. I, I never watched that show, but I've heard good things about it. But I don't know. It's you must have heard it from nerds. <laughs> that's true. That's that's probably true. <laughs> I'm looking at you, nerds. Bears, beaks, Battle Star Galactica. Um, wait, did you guys ever see that port? Sorry, this is a whole tangent, but did you ever see that Portlandia episode <laughs> where the people start watching Battle Star Galactica and they can't stop and they end up losing their job and they're like completely like unshowered and then they like <laughs> pay like the writer to come and like continue the series at their house. Anyway, it's oh my miracle. <laughs> no, but I love Portlandia. I love it. Oh my God, me too. Yeah, yeah. Me too. It's so good. So, um, so good. Yeah, so, but, oh yeah, so Allie Mack, you were saying she she's like the one who kind of was like the VIP member. And then I think that's kind of what people remember from this whole situation that is really recent where it's like the sex cult in upstate New York because it it basically de under I thought that ESP was at the top and then that was the umbrella. I think ne isn't Nexium the umbrella and then ESP and then all of the other ones like okay. DOS that's okay. the sex cult. Okay, got it. Yes, DOS stands for dominant over submissive, right? Yes. Yes. And that's where the third episode starts and yeah, it, it's wild to me. I, I was watching the third episode with Tyler. I actually watched it twice because I couldn't wait for him. So I watched it myself and then I watched it again with Tyler. And it's like, how bold had they become that that's a what they're calling an organization that's meant to be like a female Freemasons where they're like secret doing do gooders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then they're also they're they're using terms in the little organization like master and slave yeah and slave i was like slave. and people are like yeah it's cool yeah, yeah that's fine that's fine yeah, yeah. nuts no. <laughs> the way these people but like the people at the top of it are so slick i mean mm -hmm. they could ex they could explain anything and make it sound just like oh yeah that's like that makes sense mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. when you have a bunch of people who just feel like they're lost in life yeah. like they're like, okay, well, I guess that makes sense then. Thanks for telling me. Yeah. So like people, like if you are so lost that you need something like, you need something to belong to, you need something to like make you feel, I don't know, like you like you even are exist or, or are seen. Like, have you heard of Hamilton? Have you heard of The Office? Like, have you heard of it? Like anything else? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. anything else yeah sorry someone liz chambers said something interesting she said i grew up evangelical fundamentalist christian and that's not far off from what you're talking about oh wow um, okay. caution caution listen, do not discuss no 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 not to, but i'm just saying from the horse's mouth i'm just saying like that's interesting yeah you know yeah um i do i do think that 
Well, they started, people started to look at Keith like he was a god, like, which was all, always what happens with cults, mm -hmm. right? Like, it's mm -hmm. just, he can't do anything wrong, and everyone's so enchanted with him, and even though he's kind of off, they're like, oh, but he's off in a good way it's that beautiful feathered hair that he has <laughs> the feathered hair and his kind of too tight pants and in like not a nice way yeah the, the lover boy headband when he's playing volleyball what what is with the volleyball <laughs> so weird um so some, i don't know okay sorry some people are coming late uh <clears throat> late and they're wondering what we're talking about so we're talking about the docuseries called the vow on hbo and it's about the cult Nexium. Get into it. Yes. Get into it. <laughs> to summarize, it's an MLM and a cult. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. they don't sleep. Instead, they play volleyball. And the leader, who's still the leader, is in prison. Spoiler. Yeah. He is in prison. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He is, and I think most of the people under him, like Nancy and her daughter, uh, Lauren, who's like super crazy. I think Lauren's a fucking bitch. Oh, oh dude. She's the worst. Crazy. The worst. The worst. <laughs> the worst. <laughs> Can Sorry, we talk about the markings? Sorry, I've got marks. The branding. On this one. The branding. The Are branding. Literal branding, you guys. Yeah. Br branding. Not just like, oh, look at the Nike swoosh. It's our brand. No. Like a, like a, Brandon, yeah. what got okay? There's so many things. So what's so, up? There's so many. Like I rewatched that third episode, and I was like, "Oh my god!" There's like 19 <laughs> things. Like I, yeah. whoa. So mm -hmm. I'll just mention the one that's popped in my head. Yeah. So when is her name Sarah? Right, that one. Anyway, Sarah the is the, the, ra the raven-haired actress. Right. So yes. the one that basically breaks free in episode three. Yes. Is breaking free. Yes. Yes. Um, so when she's talking about this whole branding ceremony, right? They're all freaking out or whatever. And she's talking about how they're taking like a hot pen and like creating the brand one stroke at a time. I was like, is it? Why don't they just have one thing that brands you? Why is it this? What the hell? I'm like, what the hell kind of branding is this? That doesn't even make sense. Yeah. Crazy. It, it's like, does somebody bring over a wood burning tool and they're just over yeah. there, like just drawing on you? We're just yeah. Gonna, we're just gonna, so so they're not even all gonna look exactly the same. Like, right. What? I don't, anyway. No, oh, that's a good point. I didn't even think about that. That's, a, that's like the 20th point, but like I, also, sorry, if I don't, if I don't say these things when I come to my head, I will forget them. But the whole idea about collateral <gasps> is insane. Kate, you what? took the word right out of my mouth. You mean, you mean blackmail? Yes. Yes. Emotional blackmail. Mm -hmm. Also what Scientology goes off of. We won't discuss any other religions, but I will, I, I feel like I, I will say Scientology is for faux show a cult. And that's exactly what they do. And that's what Nexium Nexium does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait a second. Uh, Rain Coover, I thought in the original story they did have a single iron branding thing. Maybe that's just for the show. No, this is a documentary. These are the people talking about it. And they showed a picture of it. This was not a forged iron brand. This was like a, yeah. a pen. <laughs> Heather, Heather's like a hot pen. pen. Right. Heather's vanity said it's a cautery pen that's used in medical centers like to bust the blood vessel that you have under your thumbnail when you smashed it. Whoa. Okay. Okay, <sighs> Heather's vanity. Getting in there. Impressed. Yeah, I'm like taking notes. <laughs> like, like okay, it. got got yeah. it. Okay, cautery pen. Um <laughs> so okay, sorry, I was just skimming the, the comments. No. Um, so the idea of collateral, they actually, did you guys notice, I think in episode one, they just kind of mention it. Oh, I'll have to rewatch. Yeah, they I mention don't... it. And someone, I think, maybe I made this up or it's from a different documentary about a different cult, but it was something like, oh yeah, and I just had to kind of tell them like where my son lived, like something really weird. We need to rewatch it. Yeah. Because I was like, 
did they just say that? You know, and then I just kept watching. Right. It was so bizarre. Mm-hmm. And I thought, wait, 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 what's this whole collateral thing? And then I, re- I kind of put two and together and I was like, oh, they're basically just collecting blackmail. So you can Collecting never blackmail and Sarah, the, the gal we were talking about, the actress, she basically says to Lauren, who is evil, <laughs> She is, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like the fa- one of the founder's daughters, like Nancy's daughter, is Lauren, and basically she says to Lauren, who apparently is also her best friend. So yikes! Um, she's like, I don't, I don't really feel like I have any, any like deep dark secrets. Like I don't know. And then Lauren is just like, just make something up, and then, and then Sarah makes shit up about her husband, her parents, her sibling. And just goes on record and also gives Lauren a nude photo for extra collateral. Yeah. It's insane. Yep. Why you could ever think like, you know, I'm going to step back. I don't know about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like when they describe to you what we mean when we say collateral is we need information or something, something about you that would be devastating to your life if it ever got out. Yeah. Sounds great. This is really going to help me in my life. <laughs> yeah. And they had parts of um, their conversation. So a lot of the conversations ended up being recorded. And so in this documentary, they just kind of had had it like typed out or whatever. And God, I forgot where I was going with this. The collateral, Lauren, Newt. Oh, So, you know, Sarah's basically like, I think when she kind of starts to realize, like, you know, everything starts to lift, the light is starting to go off. She's like, well, you haven't like shown anyone (laughs) these pictures or anything, right? And Lauren's like, well, we can't really talk about that. You can can hear her lying. You can hear it. Right. Like you said you deleted it. it. And she's like, "Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, right. Girl. I just, I don't know. I mean, I, I there's so many people to blame. I mean, I, I, I can, we can say that they victimize people. I, I, I can agree with that. But also, I, at a certain point, I had to look at these, like someone like Sarah, and just be like, girl, you're responsible too. Like, you're you could it. Yeah. You're not no, no, no thinkies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No thinkies. No, um, so Sophia's asking, did they take over the followers finances? I don't know. I, they haven't gotten to that point yet, but I would imagine, I would imagine. Yes. I don't know. I don't know. I'm ready for anything at this point. I'm ready to just be like flabbergasted. I mean, if there's nine episodes, I'm waiting for somebody to grow horns. Uh, yeah. Um, take flight. <laughs> well, you know what I want to bring? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> You know what I want to bring up, which I don't I don't want to take us too far away from the vow, but oh, Stephanie Windsor. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Life, eh? Life sentence. So there, huh. <laughs> there's got to be a lot of shit. I mean, there's like European royalty involved with the sex trafficking. I mean, it's going to get deep. Dude, I consulted Wikipedia, which, you know, yep. is the answer to yes, all. Please, please tell us. There are connections. Um Hang on a second. Where did I? Crap, I lost it. It's about. Take your time. I'll find it. I'll find it. Stand by. Hold, please. (laughs) There's there's a connection to um, Epstein. Of course there is. Of course. Of course. Of course. I mean, I can't imagine the sex trafficking world is... (laughs) Hey, it's a tight network. I know. Oh my God. It's got to be a small, small world. Oh, just saying those words. Ugh. I know. Yeah, it's gross, right? <sighs> well, should I tell? I, I was, oh, there's a Mexican Mormon connection. Do you remember that part where the Mexican, the son of yes. the of Mexico, and he brought it down to Mexico City? What? Oh, wait, what? Oh, no. yeah. That's how they Mexico expanded. Too. They talk about how the former president of Mexico, his son, oh, went right. and joined and got really into it. And then he brought it down to, like, I think Mexico City. I think. 
But he oh brought that God. to me. It's like a disease. It's like a virus. Walla wee wa. It's, like it's like a virus. <laughs> um, Crap. I, Where did I see this? Did, oh, yeah. I, did I just make this up? I'll find it. I doubt it. Well, when you find it, please intervene um, and let us know. I was going to talk about the Lululemon connection. Is that Ooh. something I should... <laughs> Okay, please. Let's talk about Lululemon, okay? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. You didn't know that we were going to talk about Lululemon um, <laughs> in conjunction with this, did you? But that's right, we are. So basically, when after I had this whole you know situation happen in Toronto when I was doing that show and I landmark and I was like, get the hell out of here and okay, fine. So we're done with that. It's years later. I come back to New York City, which is my home base. Oh. Yes, Sarah, Hold please, please I found it. it. Hold, please, I found it. Got it, so, got it. Um, this is after um, Keith Rainier's conviction. The lawyer that he asked um, to help him is Alan Dershowitz, who was Epstein's lawyer. The truly evil. A true truly evil. Truly evil person. And it says, to avoid detection at times, Rainier gave false names of people he was allegedly calling to prison officials. And the call recipients employed burner phones in an attempt to avoid detection. If you're on the up and up, what's what's with all the covers? Hiding. Anyways, yeah. okay, back to the Lululemon being a whoa, call. whoa, wow. That's probably in episode nine. <laughs> I mean, I can't wait. I can't wait. I yeah. I was tempted to Google this stuff, but then I was like, wait, I don't. I almost don't want to ruin it. Don't spoil <laughs> it. But <laughs> it's okay. It's fine. It'll still be t horrific. Mm -hmm. when we watch it so you know years years later after my you know landmark form experience i got hired at lululemon which admittedly is so not my vibe or who i am talk about like a group mentality i mean geez louise it's like just a spandex sorority cult um we all love their pants i love their pants i had about 25 <laughs> pairs because i had a di that sweet ass discount you know because I worked there for over three years. It's like a thousand dollars. Yeah. Oh yeah. I had them in like coral. I had them in inappropriate colors, like just <laughs> all of them. So, and I've sold them all <laughs> since then, except for like a couple pairs on Poshmark. Anyway, mm -hmm. yeah. So Lululemon, I worked for them for quite some time. And when I got hired, um, I was, I remember I was sitting down in the back room, you know, having my HR meeting or whatever, my hiring meeting, and they were going over their policies and everything. And, um, it was like super shiny, happy people, right? Like it's literally, it feels very landmarkish there, um, which didn't feel right, but I was like, I needed a job, you know, I needed a job and I was like, okay, free, free, uh, discounts and on spandex and free classes. Sure. Why not? So I'm sitting there and then, you know, the assistant store manager is like, it was just like a giant shit eating grin on her face. She's like, and the best part is <laughs> Lululemon has a very special gift to offer you. I'm like, oh, that's, yeah, what, what's that? You know, just like yeah. fucking playing the game. <laughs> and she's like, landmark forum. And I was like, no! <laughs> just like inside, but I was like, oh my God. Uh, if I would have had a drink, I would have taken a drink, but I didn't. So I was just uh, horrified. But case in point, I stayed. I mean, you know, <laughs> I stayed. But that was their gift. So Lululemon was run by a crazy asshole person named Chip Wilson. It was founded by Chip Wilson. And he aligned himself with Landmark Forum. And he's also a racist and a misogynist. And he is not associated with the company anymore. They've gone through a couple people, a couple of another failed person who just couldn't get it right. But um, yeah, basically it was Landmark Forum and in their library was Ayn Rand. They had the Fountainhead as one of their core uh, curriculum or whatever, things we needed to read. Like, um, in every cult, in every cult, it's Ayn Rand. Yeah. Cult, you're in yeah. a cult, call your dad, Ayn Rand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So that was, you know, I think Lululemon's really tried to change that around. They've stopped associating themselves with Landmark Forum. Um, I don't know. I don't know why. And they would never, they would never say because they're slick like that. But um, yeah, that was, that was the gift. And so I actually never went again. And there was a lot of pressure to go. They were like, you know, every, you know, six months it would, they would say, you know, you haven't used your gift, you know, that the company is providing you or offering you. And I was one of the three people in the store who, who didn't go. We were just like badgered all the time. Um, no, Teresa, you should be happy that you don't know what Landmark Forum is. Yeah. I didn't know either. Lucky us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's crazy. You, you are the lucky ones. Yeah. Um, so yeah, basically I did, I didn't go and I, I had to like the store badgered me until I literally had to do to them what I did to that man on the phone years <laughs> earlier where I was like, you are in a, whatever he was like, you know, a, a, some sort of a key leader. And I was like, you're a key leader. You are badgering me. I feel harassed. Do not bring this up ever again. I do not. I told you, I don't want this. And it's like, it's, it's crazy. It's like, it is a very sort of religious slash cult mentality of like, we're just going to try to sell you on this over and over again and see if you can become a part. And people would, I'm sorry, and then I'm going to shut up. One more thing. People would want to use their gift. They're like, well, yeah, I should use the gift. And then they'd be like, I don't want to go. I don't want to go, but I'm going to go it's, and, and just be done with it. And then they would come back and they would be like, okay, listen, it was amazing. I just have to say, like, I was really skeptical at first, but it was amazing. And I was always like, brainwashing. Yeah, no, like that, that's a reasonable response to like maybe a, a hot stone massage where you think it's going to be weird or like getting a pedicure with the little guppies that eat the skin off the bottom of your feet. <laughs> like that's reasonable, but like a, a cult about self-improvement and like telling yeah. strangers about strained relationships no no that's a no dog yeah no <sighs> yeah and wait we need to talk about what's his name chip wilson chip wilson i know a lot about chip wilson please please go on so consult the wikipedias <laughs> he, he is straight up racist and i know he has tried to explain some things away, but he basically calls Lululemon, Lululemon, because it's difficult for Asian people to pronounce it. That's correct. And if you can, yeah. Sarah, Google it, it'll come right up. It is, that is literally, he has what? stated, that is why he named it Lululemon, because he yes. thinks it's funny to watch Asian people try to pronounce it. Mm -hmm. That's really cruel. Because they're, they're like a Canadian, based company yeah. right? mm -hmm. quarter. and there's a lot of Asians I know on the west coast like in Vancouver and so there's a lot of like racial tension there and yeah and yeah <laughs> there you have it I mean Chip Wilson is were you gonna say something Sarah no I was gonna okay. say I found a, a little excerpt that says um the Colbert report featured him on the alpha dog of the week criticizing him um, for his views on the influence of birth control and having said that some women's bodies just don't work for Lulu, Lululemon pants. Right. So that was wow. like the big thing that kind of like fucked him over was that, um, he, you know, people would talk about like the pilling that happens in Lululemon pants, like between the legs. Like obviously if you have, if you don't have a thigh gap, you're going to have like rubbing, right? And like his explanation was, well, if you, if you have that, um, you know, these pr pants probably aren't made for you. So his point was like, we're not going to go, we're not going to go above like a size 12. Like he, that that's where they, I think to this day, unless I'm wrong, someone correct me. I believe they only make up to a size 12. Correct. Um, and he just stated very, very bluntly that he just felt, uh, that, you know, Lululemon pants were only made for certain women. And if you were above a certain size, that wasn't for you. Wow, rude. Rude. <laughs> I Googled, why is it called Lululemon? And it says, 
Wilson shared that he named the brand Lululemon because it had three L's, which is difficult for Japanese people to say, and he thought it was funny. Yeah. 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 On the website, thelist.com, they say, in a now deleted letter, Wilson stop. shared his name <laughs> sorry. Lululemon because it had three hey, L's. Google, it's stop. difficult for Japanese people to say, but he thought it was funny. Sorry. To find more, look for the link in your Google Home or Google Assistant app. Okay. Thank, thank you for con thank you for mansplaining that Google. That's very nice. <laughs> I've had this little Google Home thing sitting in my corner for like months. I never use it, and that's the first time it's just gone off like that. <laughs> Devin Kirk said the cults are listening. Listen, and he wanted to be part of the conversation. <laughs> yeah, no. Kid. Well, he so he's no longer a part. But like the the thing that's problematic is that that's where it all began was with him. So even if he's no longer a part of it. He literally created yeah. Lululemon. It's his legacy. Yeah. It's his legacy. And then they hired some other asshole who um, they fired because he was having a years long relationship with a woman in the company, which is against company policy. So they had to let that person go because of the Me Too movement. And now apparently they moved on to someone who is going to do amazing, amazing things. So I hope I hope that person does. Well, I hope so. They have a lot of things to fix um, <laughs> <laughs> because it's built on a very shaky foundation. Where yeah. they hired some very. I'm not talking about you, Kate, but they've hired some uh, some shaky people. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, it's just. I think it's fascinating how much has gone on with Lululemon, and it's just not talked about at all. It's not talked. Oh, I'm sorry. Go on, Michelle. Yeah. No, I was just going to refer to the murder. <laughs> the oh, oh yes, please go on. Please go on. <clears throat> but that whole Lululemon murder, I didn't even know about it until you mentioned it, Kate. And I was like, why, why, <laughs> why is like, why is this brand like untouched? It's so strange to me. There's like much lesser things that have taken down a brand completely, just burned it to the, burned it to ashes. But this, it's perfectly fine. Well, yeah, I, I agree. I, I think, well, I, yes, I found out about the Lululemon murder, like in my first year there, and I found out about it by myself, or maybe, maybe a random coworker had mentioned it. And then I Google, I just fell into a rabbit hole, but like, it's something that people, not that I'm saying, obviously there, if there's something tragic, I'm not saying people should be bringing it up all the time. That's not what I'm saying. But like the fact that it was just I never would have known. And I was working there, I believe in 2012, and the murder had happened in 2011 in Bethesda, Maryland. And no one said a word. And the reason we had to have a security guard there at night was because of that murder. And no one explained, they were like, we're just like really concerned about your safety. No, no, it was because of the murder and it was getting all this attention and so Lululemon, like, you know, we all, ha they had to have a security guard in place after that. But that's, that's why the Lululemon murder. Murders. Murders. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm hoping that Sarah will do a crew crime on this because I, I yeah. think it needs to be exposed. I mean, it just needs it to be talked about. One. There are, yeah, it calls for one. There are, there's a few, um, if you just look on YouTube for the Lululemon murders or the yoga store murders, which I don't know why they call it yoga store. It's not, um, you'll find it, but it, I, I, I'm going to do one. Um, that murder happened about six months before I moved to this area and I never heard about it until Kate brought it up. So it is very, <laughs> shh, shh, very covered up. And Bethesda is. is like maybe 20 minutes for me. So like, it's all very, it's a DC suburb. Mm -hmm. um, super affluent. That store is still open. It's in the same location. Yeah. Um, Creep, it's, creepy. It's, it's wild. It's wild. Um, someone said, are there murders? No, it was one murder. Just, just to it, be clear. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. was one murder. I mean, you can, you can look it up. Um, so the, the gist of it is that there was a, t a terrible crime of murder that happened in, inside a Lululemon store to Lululemon employees it was blamed on some masked assailant. Um, and then it turns out that it was not the masked assailant. It was one of the people that was a victim. Yeah. What? Mm -hmm. yes. 
it's crazy. It's a crazy story, but it's yeah, crazy. You and cover the, it. the person who did it, and I'm not going to spoil anymore, but the person who did it was actually um, fired from the Lululemon in Georgetown for stealing. Really? She has sticky finger syndrome. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know that she had, she had, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. She worked at the Lululemon in Georgetown and got fired because things were disappearing and walking away. And then uh, I don't know how she then got hired at the Lululemon in Bethesda, but okay. Wow. That is really something. Well, I mean, like I, I found in working through that company over the years, I can't, I mean, the last time I worked there was a, a couple years ago, or I guess maybe closer to three years now. Um, but they, it's very much that like landmark, even though they don't associate with themselves with that anymore. It's very much that vibe. It's like we would have staff meetings and we would all circle up with their legs crossed and we would have to start every staff meeting. Wow, I'm really doing an expose here, aren't I? We had to start every, <laughs> guess I don't, guess I don't care. Um, <laughs> we, we basically had to um, start every meeting with what they call a clearing, which from what I remember is very much a Scientology term, like going clear. So that's how, and it was basically like, they would say it's, you know, a way to let go of anything you're holding in. But basically, it was airing your dirty laundry and sharing personal things um, about personal situations in your life so that you could move on. But let me remind you, we're all working retail. So what are we doing? What's happening there? So lots of issues, lots, lots of problematic things. And I think the reason people don't talk about it with Lululemon I don't know. I think that people, well, people love the product and I think people are scared. I think people who work for the, like people who work for the, it's, it is sort of insidious. It gets in your head. And, and I think people, that's, all, yeah, I really do think people just get scared. They're like, well, I don't want to say anything because they were good to me or they gave me free classes or it's like, well, okay. If that's yeah. what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I have two Lululemon things and it's like the same thing in two colors. It's actually pretty incredible. Shout out to Lululemon. <laughs> yeah. I mean, listen, they make great stuff. It's a, it's a tank top, but the tank top has like, a like in sewn into the top. It, it looks like, um, it's like a pocket. Cause I'm somebody that I can't wear those armband things with my phone yeah. or whatever. So I was just put my phone in like a sandwich baggie and stuff it in my bra. But this one has the pockets. So you can just stuff it in. Thanks, Listen, Lou. <laughs> it's great. It's great. I, I own, I love their Align pants. They're the best stretchy pants I've ever owned. They're still a cult. I'm, I'm too afraid to buy their pants because then I'm going to be, a, you know, trapped. It's like the Charlotte Tilbury powder. It's like the Chantecaille powder. It's like anything where it's like, yeah. if, it's, if it's Primo, I know I'm gonna fall in love with it and then I can't, I'm trapped. Yeah. yeah. It's a cult. Uh, it's true. <laughs> it's a cult, call your test. Sorry, I can't stop saying it. Yes. I have found um, <clears throat> an alternative uh, because I do love the Lou Lemon product. I'm not gonna lie, I do own a lot of it. <clears throat> but since finding out more and more about the company, I started buying Sweaty Betty stuff. And they're basically like the British version of Lou Lemon. Nice. <laughs> So it's not any cheaper, but the quality is great. And they have, you know, the designs are really nice. Um, they don't have as many, their their presence isn't as strong as Lululemon, but Nordstrom carries them. So if you're looking for an alternative, I do like Sweaty Betty. I don't know if either of you have ever tried. I've never heard of it, but it says that there's a Sweaty Betty in New York City. Yes. There is, there's a few. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think actually one of my previous Lululemon managers now, I think she somehow works for them. So yeah, I, I've heard good things about, about Sweaty Betty. Um, hmm. But I'm looking to see if there's one near me. Stand by, hold please. <laughs> if there's one in Bethesda, I might die. Nope, there isn't. So people keep on calling ESP EST, which I'm confused about because in Nexium it's called ESP. Yes, yeah, executive uh, success Pers personal program? service executive. Yeah, hang yeah. on, I'm gonna look it up. But what is EST? That's 
Hang on. Or est. I don't know. Oh, oh Lord is, is an old one? Yes, okay. he is. Old. Oh. Okay. Hmm. There's still a thing. Oh, it's ESP. ESP. P, like popcorn. Yeah. Right. But people are saying EST was, oh, this person says, my chosen life says Earhart seminars training was what EST was. Oh, was it another thing? Is it yeah. like, like, geez Louise. But it's like the same. No, there's so many of them. Different, but the same. Um, Debbie, I just want to let you know that it's rice flour. Hmm. Very Maybe. nice. And there's some potato starch. Oh, there's avocado in here. You know, I'm allergic to avocado and my tongue feels like kind of numb. Mm. And I was oh. wondering what it was. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm going to stop eating though. Oh, I'm sorry. Someone, Petunia Tube said, ESG, they won't let you go to the bathroom. That's another thing. One of the million things that's in my head that we were talking about Nexium and Landmark. So Landmark Forum, if you do that three-day seminar, they don't let you go to the bathroom and they don't let you take, like you can't take your own breaks or just leave if you have to. Like that's a part of the situation. So, mm. yeah. Don't like. Anyway. It's, yeah, I guess it's it's these little ways of controlling you that yeah. just, yeah, they just keep your brain there. When I was rewatching the third episode, Keith, Keith, who's now apparently now in prison, was talking about collateral and he was explaining it very easily. And he was like, well, we can't just take your word. Like you have to mean it and we have to know you mean it. And right. so collateral is a way for us to know you are giving us something of your body and yeah. you mean it. Like your your word means more when you have more to lose. Right. And it's like, yeah, but then what are you gonna give me to make me trust that you're not gonna spill my beans? Yeah, and like, why do you need that? I mean, like, shouldn't if if like you if there's this amazing trust in this organization, like, shouldn't your word be enough? Like, that's my that's my question. Like, why isn't that enough? If if the people you have are so incredible, right? We're supposed to be this family, right? Yeah. Hmm. 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 <laughs> well, obviously, we know how it turned out. <laughs> Didn't go so well. Not good. Oh my god. So good. Where oh, Lavender Life likes your haircut, Kate. Oh, thank you. Uh, it's fresh. I got a fresh haircut. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, you're you had it for your live stream yesterday, right? I'm losing track of time. Yes, yeah. I did. I got yeah, that's right. Yeah. I did enjoy seeing that vulnerable moment where you showed the whole oh. the back. I did. Someone wanted to see the back of my my head, so I I did a turnaround. It felt very, very vulnerable. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. So, okay. So I did notice, Sarah, that when I mentioned Lululemon murder, crew crime, there was a lot of interest. Okay. Well. I just want to make sure you caught that. Well, consider it done. Okay. I'm working on it. I can't um, wait. Kate's going to be a great source. And I think what's going to be really cool and unique is that I'll be able to kind of work in maybe some insider knowledge of what it might have felt like to work for the company when that situation was pretty fresh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fresh. Yeah. I have a lot of, um, yeah, have a lot of thoughts. If you have any questions. <laughs> Wild. <laughs> oh, man. It's a rough time. It's wild. I mean, like, I, I just, I can't believe that I'd never heard of it. It had only happened six months before I moved here. It wasn't even on the news anymore. Yeah. I mean, people still talk about the Beltway murders. And that was, like, the snipers. That was, yeah. geez, like, ten years ago. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't know why it's all slipped under the radar. I really don't. It's wild too. It's crazy to me because like that store location, Bethesda is super affluent. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's like next to an Apple store and like across the street, like a caddy corner from like a Tiffany. Like it's money. Right. There. Yeah. And the front door was open, like unlocked. Anybody could have come in and found this happening. It happened yeah. right, right in the store, not like in front of the, the display windows or whatever. And it was, um, 
after closing time, but the Apple store was still open. They heard it. They yes. heard it happening. And they did nothing because yeah. they were like, oh, it's... they didn't know. They, they're just like, all oh, those bitches are in there fighting. You know, they didn't know. Like maybe they were, I don't know. I don't know what they thought, but I'll try to, I'll try to find that out to include that in my, my summary. Yeah. But it's like, imagine the torture that they must yeah. feel when they know that they heard it happening. Yeah. Oh my God. A awful. Awful. And the, th the th yeah. I guess that's just like, I let that be a lesson. I don't know if you, if you think you hear something really bad going on, maybe just, maybe just give, maybe call 911. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Wouldn't you rather just like they be mad at you for overreacting? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, that's crazy. Oh, so Devin Kirk says, I think I remember seeing some CCT footage from it on the local news. The mm. thing is, at that time, um, there w that wasn't a thing. The only store that had CCT footage was the Apple store because it was a tech company. Nobody else had cameras because no one cared. There was so much money, like no, but nothing was happening downtown. Right. So, or down Bethesda. There like, are no cameras. Money the store. So they did find some footage that matched the description that um, the girl who survived mentioned, but they were busboys that worked at a restaurant down the street that that was just their regular route. They, they found them, they talked to them and they're like, yeah, that's us. We're leaving our shift. That's, a, you know. Yeah. Wow. Wild. Wow. I will say that when I was like, you know, things that I've heard in, in the years that I worked for Lululemon from people who I was working with, who were relatively clueless, obviously, were just like, I just don't, I don't understand how this could happen at our company. Like they hire such amazing people. Like how could, how could this happen? And it's like, no, that's literally what sociopaths are. They seem right. amazing. They seem normal. They're <laughs> total narcissists who are manipulative and like, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. Oh, wow. There's a Wikipedia page about this. Yes. Oh, it's small. Never mind. It is small. It's, it's not, yeah, it doesn't, that's the thing. You kind of have to hop around to a lot of different things to read all the details. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Zoinks. Um, <laughs> There's a lot of, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm hopping topics here. There's yeah. a lot of talk about, I don't know if you guys saw that Pat McGrath Supreme lipstick collaboration that was released this morning. I, I mean, did. Are you going to get it? I couldn't get, I couldn't get onto the Supreme site. It like crashed and apparently it sold out in like a minute. Okay. I'm sorry. I don't know what Supreme is. What is it's that? Like streetwear. Yeah. Oh. Streetwear, New York based streetwear. Oh, okay. Cool. Um, cool. And I just... That sounds awesome. I mean, yeah, I've I've just enjoyed them for a long time. They've gotten very mainstream or whatever. It's fine. But I just love the word. I love Supreme. Yeah. <laughs> well, the packaging is really cool on it. Like just the tube itself. Yeah. 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 That's the Supreme logo. It's like usually just a red rectangle with the Supreme in, in white. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, it came out this morning. The website apparently crashed. It, the lipstick sold out in a minute. So I did not get my chance on it. Um, yeah, Supreme sold out as fast as a blink. It sure yeah. did. Don't, don't you think mother will send you a tube? <laughs> You're very fancy, Michelle. Yes. Yes, but I'm not on, I'm not, I'm not in mother's Rolodex. We'll say oh, that. That's a crying shame. <laughs> that's a, that is a crime. That's her loss. That's right. <laughs> um, Let's I, see. Oh, sorry. I, well, I did want to say this is this is totally off topic, but it does play into another live stream we did together. So, Michelle, remember when you were talking about fa the movie Foul Play with Chevy Chase and Goldie Hawn? Yes, one of my favorite movies. So, a subscriber sent it to me. <gasps> Stop it! <laughs> Look at that! Oh yes, my god! There it is. So, this is from Hel Helene. She said, I couldn't find this streaming anywhere and thought you and Randy might enjoy it. I just like, I can't wait to watch this. Oh my God. Chevy Chase was such a snack in his youth. He was. What a dick though. I such know. A dick. For sure. Such a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is apparently his first like, mo like major, Randy told me this, like his major mo first motion picture or whatever. So 
Yeah, and it's, I mean, there are funny parts to that. I, we talked about this, but it's not, he's like playing like a dramatic role. He's a detective, so. Yeah, he's got that butt chin that I, I just think is very, like that Andy Samberg situation that I think is very, very attractive. It's cute. I'm it's not cute. a fan of that, but. Well, you don't curl like up and take a nap in it. <laughs> you don't, Michelle, you don't like the butt chin. I don't like the butt chin. Is no, there a reason or? It's just so, um. It's just, it's almost like a caricature, uh, like facial feature. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just like we immediately gone into an unpopular opinions and we didn't even mean to, I'm obsessed with it. We can't it's, help ourselves. We can't. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. It's, it's such like, a, yeah, it's just, it's like such, it's like a, it's like a joke. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Like, you know what I mean? Like when, like a cartoon yeah. drawing, if they're gonna draw like a very masculine yeah. Yeah. pirate they have, a butt. They have this gigantic like yeah. butt skin. Like Gaston. Like Gaston. Right, it's it's comic. It's like, how could that even be real on a person? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. understandable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It is just, it's admittedly very distracting. Like it's, <laughs> it is a distraction. Well, it's one of those things like, once you, once you see, you can't unsee it and then you're just yeah. like, <laughs> and when I see it on a man, and I know this is very strange, but every time I see it on a man, I think of him shaving, and I'm like, what does he do? Does he try and pull oh, it out? Yeah. Spread it like, apart. Like, get, <laughs> that almost feels a little sexual. I don't know why, but just like get, get in. Get in there. I don't know why. I'm sorry. I need an adult. I know. It just felt wrong <laughs> or not wrong. Just sexual. A scandal. <laughs> <laughs> just this bit wait i can't get in the, get in the frame kate there <laughs> this oh my god oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. I'm, I'm literally my palms are sweating <laughs> oh chubby oh my, Chase. Oh my that's god that's also like along the same lines as like where there's just chest hairs coming out of a shirt and you're yeah. just like, where they sprout. Can you just tuck that in? <laughs> just, there we go. That's better. Tuck it, tuck it in. Or like just, just trim. <laughs> yeah. It's. <laughs> I love how we're just like all the mannerisms and all the actions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh my God. Wow. Ooh, okay, okay, so foul play. Yes. So you just got it, so you haven't watched it. No, we haven't watched it. We will. We will. Okay. Kate, tonight. Yeah. I want you to watch it. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. I, I'm reading the back, and it is really, it sounds so, like, yeah. Okay, I'm in. Okay. I'm in. Because I'm gonna, back. We, we expect a, a summary, a report. Yeah, because, Sarah, you've seen okay. it, right? No, no. What? Maybe I need to take it to when when I go visit Sarah. Maybe I need to take it. Yeah, with me. take it. Yeah, yes. take it. Bring it. Yes. Okay. Why? It is old. It is old, and I okay. Okay, it's let me find the date old. on here. It's 1978. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. That sounds about right. I love the cover. Yeah. That's fabulously retro, obviously. Um. Okay, I'll get back to you. Oh my it. god. I can't wait. Our next live stream, we're talking about foul play. Okay. Yeah. We're on <laughs> We're on it. Man, we have range, okay? We're talking about murders. We're talking about Lululemon. We're That's talking right. about sex cults, butt chins, <laughs> yes. chest hair, chest hair yes. nail grooming. Yes. <laughs> All of it. And we, this, we is the, this is the code for chest hair. This. Yeah. And we talked about this. And then we also talked about Pat McGrath. So we're really staying true to brand we yes. are we mm -hmm. are yeah. yeah this is a shout out to you ladies that you yeah. two are too young to have seen it <laughs> it's very kind lisa k is, is i feel like lisa k saying michelle you're too young to have seen it no no, no you two oh are too young to have seen foul play oh well i yeah i don't know though i think sarah and i we like old we like the old things too right like don't you don't you like kind of retro stuff I think people think I'm younger than I am, which mm. is a nice problem to have, but this is yeah. just lots of really good lighting in here. If you see yeah. me in person, then you understand why I 
cling to this goblin character so much. <laughs> same. No, same. Sometimes I feel like people think that I'm... I don't know what they like. Maybe in my late twenties or something. I don't know. I, it, it is the beauty lighting. It's like these ring lights are very forgiving. Full on. They're very yeah. forgiving. But mm -hmm. I'm I'm not a youth. <laughs> no, I'm thirty seven, and you're I'm twenty nine. Okay, you're twenty nine. So exactly, that that's exactly right. <laughs> yes, we're not we're mm -hmm. not, but we're not but children. <laughs> no. no. Um. Anything, anything else going on? Let's see. Yeah, what's what else is happening in the comments? All I know is that I need to highlight that. <laughs> B bushy, bushy bunches. Oh, it's like a sprout, like a little. That needs That's, to be a hashtag. That again sounds sexual too. <laughs> <laughs> bushy butchins, but also gross, like grossly sexual. I love it. <laughs> oh. Whoa, that's like a fetish, right? Like that could be like a fetish. It's a fetish. Bushy a bushy butchin. A bushy butchin. Yeah. In search of ISO bushy butchins. <laughs> ASL. Yes. Bushy butchin. Bushy butchin. There's a lot of trim the chest hair. Okay. Oh my God, Jamie K. Can we get Bushy Butt Chin Pocket Tea merch? Writing it down. Pocket Tea. Right now. I'm a Bushy Butt Chin. Maybe the next one will have a little butt. Yeah. Little. Right yeah. At, right at the bottom. You have plenty of room there. A lot of real estate. Yeah. You know what but else yeah, I realized just... is like on, on the Goblin, the original, um, the original post-it note has earrings and I somehow don't have them on here. Oh, oh no! I know. Just burn it down. We'll have to start over. Oh, <laughs> that's a shame. It is crying shame. Pamela Willis sent a three dollars super chat. Oh, oh thank you. Nice. Does that pair have a bushy butt chin? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> the pair has a giant thumbs up. I think Pamela likes bushy butt chins. I'm just yes. Just putting that. Yeah, out. I think Pamela is saying yes to that. She's into it. That maybe maybe that's Pamela's fetish. Is that what she's saying? I think different, that's what she's saying. Different strokes, girl. <laughs> different strokes. Just kidding, Pamela. Just kidding. Ooh, a little male goblin with a bushy oh. button. Oh. So Tyler then. Oh my god. <laughs> Does Tyler have a button? No. no. If yeah. it. Well, I, maybe it just depends on the light. It's like very, it's like if, if maybe I could have a butt chin in the right light. Mm, okay. I guess you do have a tiny dimple. Yeah. Just a tiny one. Let me encourage it. Yeah. Push it together. There yeah. it is. Train it. Train Hold it. On, I have to relax my face. Can't Can smile. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> yeah. What, what has this Whoa. to do? <laughs> Oh, oh, Randy's here. He just joined. The phone is okay. We put it oh. in rice. His name is Majestic Moose. Now you're probably confused. Oh, okay. I was looking. <laughs> the reason he's going by Majestic Moose is because on my live stream last night, like I have my door partially open, the kitchen door partially open back here, the the bedroom door, and like he was in the kitchen and he just went to get a snack, and someone was like. Is that Randy? Was that a ghost? Was it a sighting? And I was like, it's like when you're at Yellowstone and you're like, oh my God, I think I saw a moose. Is that a moose? Go back, go back, go back. I, and like, yeah. I so saw it happen and I like, I was thinking, oh my God, I can't wait for the people to be like, was that a Sasquatch? You know, like that one when, when the Sasquatch is like. <laughs> oh my God. I feel like Majestic Moose. It's, it's nicer. It yeah. It yes. seems very royal. Yeah. Oh, Leslie Mills. So Leslie Mills sent us a ten dollars super chat. Thank you so much. She says, "I just googled bushy butt chin." Thanks, ladies. Wait, but what happened when you googled it? Hang on, I'll Google it. Yeah, Google it, Leslie. You need to give us some details. That's not enough. Bushy butt chin. Yeah. Okay, it did not autofill, so this must be rare. Okay. <laughs> Mm. Hey, there's a beautiful cleft chins tumbler. Oh, oh. Is tumbler still around? Wow, okay. Okay. I'm just looking at, I hit images. Tumblr is still around, I think, but I don't know. Yeah. 
I think, okay, everyone on, on this live stream, pay attention. Mm -hmm. You have homework tonight. Google bushy butt chin and we're going to get a trend in, you guys. We're going to get a trend in. <laughs> Oh my God. I'm going to start hashtagging everything bushy butt chin just, <laughs> just because. Get it up there. <laughs> I We're going like to have that like zigzag arrow next to bushy butt chin. Oh, Henry Cavill. Oh, he came up? Oh, because butt chin. The butt chin. The butt chin. I feel like if I, if I hashtag that, I'm going to get a lot of like sort of maybe gay bear bears like coming, yeah. coming for that. Yeah. Oh my you know. God, Ben Affleck. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Oh no, oh no, Ben Affleck. <laughs> not, not Christina a Hendricks. That's a delicious butt chin. Le Leslie Mill said, I found that there is a hairy butt chin rap on YouTube. Rap? R-A-P? Yeah, like Wait. someone's rapping about it. Oh, okay. Like rap, like a deli rap? Just kidding. I'm sorry. Sorry, I. This is insane. Oh my God, Moose Watch. <laughs> yes, yes, I love that. Yeah, that's cute. Um. Oh wow, God. Tara B. Bushy butt chin looks like bushy labia. <laughs> well, you said it. We were doing this. But you just said it. You were over there pretending to not see it. Like, I don't see that. <laughs> I didn't see it. I synced it. I synced it. Oh, I feel, okay. 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 Yeah, okay. yeah Tara B. Let, let's not Google that. <laughs> let's not. Yeah, please don't Google bushy labia. I don't think you'll enjoy wow. what you find. We're getting or you really... might. No judgment. <laughs> like this. We're, we're getting, getting very anatomical here. <laughs> we're, we are. We're getting very obscure. Oh, John Travolta. Oh, he does have the good butt chin. Oh, well. yeah. Oh, he's like, yeah. He's the first. Uh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, if I could change but my name nice. under here. Yeah. Uh, listen, now we know what it's going to be. I love it. Next time. I love it. Oh, my God. Wow. Oh, my God. Oh, no. So, no. <laughs> Are <laughs> right, any any what haven't we talked about that we need to talk about before we go? I mean, we might have to save some things for next time. Yeah, no kidding. We have to keep the people interested. Come back to us. Fresh. Oh, I know what I wanted to mention. Oh, please. So on my, I don't know if you can see this, like on the side of my neck here, but there's like a tiny little tat. Yes. Can you see it at all? Yes. Okay, so it's very faint. It's very, yeah. very faint. Yeah. But is it I, script? Does it say um, it's, it's actually, watch? <laughs> it does. It says, well, it actually says um, bushy butt chin, like right up there behind my ear. Yes. Yeah. In this beautiful calligraphy. Yes, yes exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, it's this company, B Billy. I told you guys about this, but they sent me this huge pack, huge of like temporary tattoos and it's like these really artistic tattoos and so i'm just kind of having fun with them because oh i can't but see they're like really Ooh. they're very like oh, daintily wow. done yeah this like, is actually like line drawings yeah they're line exactly because sarah's an artist so that makes that's ex exactly so it's like very like this behind my ear it's like a squiggly line but it, it's like a lady face underneath my ear oh. you know like it's just very artistic and pretty oh, dainty so very I'm just pretty. yeah i'm just having some fun with you know because it's quarantine times <laughs> and we're just getting bored so i'm just tatting yeah. myself up you know what we should do next time and you guys are going to veto this but i'm going <laughs> to say it anyways we should just get a bunch of random temporary tattoos and just put them all over our face like post malone <gasps> let's do it i love that I'll do it. Yeah, do it. I'll do it too. We could do like like a truth or dare, and if you don't want to do it, you have to put a tattoo on your face. <laughs> I'm all about a face tattoo. Like I could, get, if it was the right tattoo, I could get down. Okay. I mean, just some. Especially if it's temporary. Well, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, okay, great. I like uh, it. 
Okay, before before we end this live stream, I just want to mention and congratulate Kate on her brush collaboration with UK Beauty. Yes, thank you. Yes, guys. Head on over to her channel. Um, her channel and Sarah's channel, they're both down in the description box. Head on over there. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, I also have a link to Sarah's merch down so there. Cute. It's well. so cute. It's so cute. It really is. Um, and if you head on over to Kate's channel, you'll see that she did a video dedicated to her BK brush collaboration. So it's a set. She'll tell you what's, you know, what's included in the set. And in yeah. that video, there's links to purchase it or whatever. So anyway, I just wanted to just wanted to say that because that's that's a big thing. Yes, Michelle. Big thing. Thank you. Thanks. It's a pledge. It was yeah, a pledge. If you guys don't know about BK brushes, um, especially this one, the bunny brush. The bunny it's not brush. The bunny brush, but it's the bunny brush. Yes, oh, my it's so delicious. I know. No, I don't have wait, where's my bunny brush? I have my, here. Minus. Minus you have it. It's in your hand. No? Is that not the bunny? I think, is that I the tapered brush brush? The 102, right? The 102. The 102. Where is mine? Why is, it's probably dirty. It's somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. But yeah. Yeah, that's a part of it. It's like, yeah, their brushes really are. Well, Sarah, you also did a video on their full brush range, which was really informational and like, their brushes are, they're just beautiful. Also just aesthetically so yeah. beautiful. Yeah, they're just very well done. You feel very fancy just having them. Um, yeah. And then using them, you're like, wow, this this is what you get when you actually pay for your brushes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 And, you know, for all of my subscribers here, you guys know that I am a fan of natural haired brushes generally. These are synthetic haired and they're wonderful. Wonderful. You guys see me reach yeah. for these all the time in my videos because they're they're really great. There's something very, very special about them. Like the way they're bundled, they're just, yeah, they're just so good. They have the right amount of fluff, the right amount of tension. Yeah, they're just good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and Kate, I was really excited to see you. Hang on, I'm trying to find the, the brush. I was really excited to see you feature this one eye brush. Here it is. It's dirty. The one, the, yes. the 206. Yes, the 206. That's, I actually used, oh my God, I'm so bad. I used that tonight when I put this eyeshadow on my finger and then I just like went over it all with this and it would just blended it beautifully. Yeah, it really is a one and done situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So good. So Love good. it. So good. So good. Well, all right, ladies. I think we should uh, sign off. I need to get dinner. <laughs> yes. Yeah, same. Michelle, oh. thank you for having us. Yes, thank oh. you. Thank you guys. I mean, there aren't many people on this planet that I can have a conversation about cults, bushy butt chins. No. So, I mean, all in one session, so. <laughs> no, I can't thank think you. of anyone, yes. Oh, well thank, CC just congratulated me on 130,000 subscribers. Oh yes, here. yay, thank you guys. congratulations. Thank you guys so, so much. Yes. Sorry, I didn't wanna, I don't wanna miss anyone, but thank you. Thank you guys. That's amazing. Uh, That's and huge. Nick was here. Sorry, I missed Nick from the viewer's voice. He just he put Yeah, in I saw him. I saw him pop in. He said good night. Well, good night. <laughs> good night, Nick. All right, guys. Well, thank you. We will see you soon. And I will see you Saturday for my next video. Nice. Bye, okay. everyone. Thanks for coming. Bye. -bye. Bye.